In this video, we're going to talk about three things, linkage, non-disjunction, and some single gene genetic disorders. First, linkage. This is when we look at traits that are inherited on the same chromosome. If we have two alleles that are very close together on the same chromosome, then when crossing over occurs during meiosis, they are going to be more likely to stick together. So then we call them linked. In this picture, you can see we have some homologous chromosomes and we have some sister chromatids. Homologous chromosomes come from each parent. So let's suppose the red chromosome came from mom and the blue chromosome came from dad. If we have an allele on one chromosome that's say for skin color, then we will have a skin color allele on the other chromosome as well. And they could be the same or they could be different. And when chromosomes replicate, then they are sister chromatids. During the first meiotic division, during prophase one, homologous chromosomes line up beside each other. And then this process called crossing over occurs. If you forget about this process, then watch the meiosis video. If we look at allele A, B, and C on these homologous chromosomes, when crossing over occurs, A and B are more likely to cross over together because they're closer together compared to A and C or B and C. And then after crossing over occurs, each chromosome breaks and switches. And then we end up with hybrid chromosomes. When crossing over occurs, this crossing over point can occur at a different location every single time. So the next time crossing over occurs, it could happen way up here, and we could separate alleles A and B. It could happen down at this end at any location. So every time that crossing over occurs, it occurs in a different place. So the probability of alleles crossing over together depends on the distance they are from each other on that chromosome. We call that distance a centimorgan. We can use linkage to find the location of disease alleles on certain chromosomes. And now a large number of markers are mapped on multiple different chromosomes. Non-disjunction. When we look at our meiosis cell division, if you recall, we have two cell divisions. The first meiotic division, we are separating the homologous chromosomes. And in the second meiotic division, we separate the sister chromatids. Sometimes, that doesn't go perfectly. And sometimes the homologous chromosomes don't separate. So if we have 23 pairs of homologous chromosomes lined up at the metaphase plate, there might be two of those homologous pairs that don't separate and both go into one of those cells. And then the next cell division that produces the gametes, the gametes will have the wrong number of chromosomes. When we have the wrong number of chromosomes, it's called aneuploidy. When chromosomes don't separate properly, whether it's in the first or the second meiotic division, that is called non-disjunction. In this diagram, we can see a non-disjunction occurring in the first meiotic division. Both sets of homologous chromosomes did not separate properly. Both of these homologous chromosomes went into the same cell. Then in the second division, when the sister chromatids separate, there are going to end up being three chromosomes in this cell and only one chromosome in this cell. So then these gametes will have an extra chromosome and these gametes will have a missing chromosome. Sometimes we can survive with chromosome non-disjunctions. First, I want to explain the difference between an autosome and a sex chromosome. So we have 23 chromosomes that we got from mom and 23 from dad, so we have a total of 46. Well, two of those chromosomes are the sex chromosomes. If you're female, you have an X and an X, and if you're male, you have an X and a Y. The other 44 chromosomes are called autosomes. We can have non-disjunctions with either autosomes or sex chromosomes. Most of them are not viable. Most of the time, if we have an extra chromosome or if we are missing a chromosome, then those cells can't survive. 
and fertilization won't even occur. Or if fertilization does occur, then a miscarriage can happen early in the pregnancy. There are two autosome non-disjunctions that can be viable. Chromosome number 21, which causes Down syndrome. If we have an extra chromosome 21, then we can survive with that non-disjunction. It is also possible, but more rare, to survive with an extra chromosome number 22. What is more common, though, is surviving with extra or missing sex chromosomes. Here is a list of the non-disjunctions that can occur in sex chromosomes that are viable. We can survive with three X's, and this is called trisomy X. Someone with three X's will be female, and there can be a whole variety of phenotypes, from simply being very tall to having learning disabilities to being infertile. Turner syndrome is when someone has one X and then no other sex chromosome. So this person would have a total of 45 chromosomes. And usually they are female. And again, symptoms can vary from very subtle to more severe. Generally, when we have non-disjunctions, fertility is difficult because there aren't the right number of chromosomes to line up to create the gametes in meiosis. Kleinfelter syndrome is one of the most unique ones because this person will have two X's, like a female, but will also have a Y, like a male. So people with Kleinfelter syndrome tend to be male, but they can also have female sex characteristics. And then we can also survive if we have an X and two Y's, and basically that extra Y doesn't cause a lot of symptoms and they can be completely normal males without any obvious symptoms. And lastly, in this video, I wanna talk about some single gene genetic mutations that we can inherit. There are a few diseases that are caused specifically by one gene. Let's, for example, say cystic fibrosis. People that have one mutated allele that affects one single gene. In this example, it's a chloride channel gene. It can cause a whole variety of different symptoms in different people that have that mutation. They will all have cystic fibrosis, but their phenotypes could be different. When we have different phenotypes caused by a single gene mutation, that is called pleiotropy. In the previous video, we talked about how we can have polygenic traits where multiple genes contribute to a single phenotype, like how tall we are. Pleiotropy is when there's a single gene that can cause multiple different phenotypes. So genetic disorders are all these examples that we're gonna look at are all caused by a single gene mutation that cause a variety of different symptoms that will cause a specific genetic disease. Our first example is called sickle cell anemia, and this is an autosomal recessive disease. It is on one of the autosomes, and it is recessive. So that means in order to have sickle cell anemia, you need to have both alleles. Sickle cell anemia affects the hemoglobin gene. Let's suppose we have a capital H for hemoglobin that's normal and a small h for hemoglobin that is sickle cell, then in order to have sickle cell anemia, you need to have both recessive mutated alleles. Our next example is called Tay-Sachs. This is also autosomal and it's also recessive. This affects an enzyme that is found in lysosomes and it causes brain deterioration and they most commonly die within the first few years of life. Cystic fibrosis, autosomal and recessive. This is our chloride channel gene. It affects water balance and it causes an increase in mucus production. It most often affects the digestive system, the respiratory system, and sweat glands. But there are a myriad of different kind of symptoms that people can have with this disease. Huntington's is an autosomal dominant mutation. If you have a Huntington's allele, 
you will have the disease if you're a heterozygote. So actually, you know, I want to point out that why do these disease alleles continue in the population if it often causes death at a young age? And that is because when we have recessive mutations, heterozygotes that carry the recessive allele do not have the disease. So then the allele can stay in the population. With Huntington's, heterozygotes will have the disease. This mutation affects a protein in neurons that causes CAG repeat sequences. This stays in the population because it is an adult onset disease, so it doesn't affect people until after they've already reproduced. Now we have genetic testing and people can find out early if they have any of these mutations. So in this neuron protein, if we add a whole bunch of CAG nucleotides, that will cause a mutation. This is a neurological progressive disease. Hemophilia is an X-linked recessive disease. This specific kind of hemophilia is a blood clotting disorder that is found on the X chromosome and it is more common for males to have it because they only have one X. Duchenne muscular dystrophy is also X-linked, also recessive. So for females to have this disease, she would need to have both mutated alleles, whereas males only need to have one. So again, it's more common in males. And this affects a gene called dystrophin, which affects the muscles. And lastly, familial hypercholesterolemia. This is an autosomal dominant disease as well, and it affects the LDL receptors that carry fats through the bloodstream, and this causes an increase in cardiovascular disease somewhere around the age of 30.